Hey folks. So good morning, good evening. Uh, Matthew and I are back again live rather than recorded. Oh, and in a little bit, uh, we're going to release, um, it's actually a, more of a TIPA for 10. What will be the courageous part is if you decide to do something <laughs> about what we're releasing. Because we had Cindy Herring, uh, who works with the Life Imaging Group, which is Canal's group, at looking at beta amyloid plaque in the human brain and that use of that as a research device, but also now a clinical device to look at how does that compare with areas of function, dysfunction in the brain with abilities, changing abilities, doesn't really match up ideas. Um, so she is very aware, and we became then aware that CMS, the CMS is making a ruling, not only about the Aduhelm, which we knew that there were issues with Aduhelm, but any drug that's looking at, you know, doing something in that class. So any drug that's being researched in that class of drugs, and the class of drugs is one that addresses beta amyloid plaque and tau pathology kind of stuff. That would also be moved off a fast track review to a further clinical study slow lane and for funding for people who aren't in the clinical trials. And that's, that's an unusual move for the, it's the first time they've ever done something like that. It's a whole class of drugs that haven't actually been reviewed. Aduhelm was reviewed and there were, I think there was a lot of, you know, questions asked about it, but to move a whole class of drugs there seems pretty quick. That seemed like a knee-jerk reaction a little bit, but what we want you to do is go look and see for yourself, and so Cindy Herring did the hard work of really finding where are the, where's the public hearing, what can you look at and understand before you get a chance to comment, and what do you want to comment on, because there is public comment. It, it's, it's available, but you have to decide to go do it. You know, it's not something that's just somebody's going to come to your door and say, oh, by the way, what do you think? So they make it available, but you have to know about it and do something about it if you want. And I'm not standing on one side or the other. What I'm saying is people need to go look because this has typically been something that once we got a drug to a certain place, and there was a lot of work done to put things in a fast track, to see if we could get things moving quicker for people living with dementia who were interested in looking at meds that might actually make a difference in the progression of their condition. Um, there was a lot of effort put into that fast track system. And there was one situation so far where it seemed like, but wait, you guys sort of stepped over the line there a little bit. The expert panel said something, but you guys decided something else that doesn't seem quite right. And then there was a backtracking and a bunch of stuff. And, you know, there was lots of issues. However, what happened then is they took a whole class of drugs and put them in that category of, so now we're just going to pay for clinics. And it's one of those things, well, they didn't do that with any of the cancer drugs. They didn't do that with any of the, so it just raises my antenna about, you know, are we relegating people to living and living with dementia into a, another category again, because it's expensive and we don't want to address it, or is there a legitimacy to it? So I'm not, I'm not giving you an opinion to go and voice. What I want you to do is listen to what Cindy has to say and look at the information and decide if you want to participate in having a voice and having people go, hmm, wait a second, or yeah, that sounds reasonable. That's what I want you to have a voice because if we don't start using the voice we do have, the options we do get, people start thinking we don't care. And when they think you don't care, then they think they can do things because who cares anyway? Just saying. So we come to this thing. <laughs> now on to my topic for this week, which is after the diagnosis. And we've, we've gone from the point of view of a medical provider. We've gone from the point of view of a partner or a caregiver or a you know, a person in the family or in the world of the person living with dementia. And this week we're really focusing on, so the provider says to you, you have dementia. Now, if they say you have dementia, the question is, are you curious, interested, wise enough to say, well, what sort of dementia do you think I have? Sounds like you think I have a condition that is going to be, it's already life altering. 
So you think that I have something that's altering my life significantly already. And one of the questions is, do I agree or disagree with you? Um, do the people around me agree or disagree with that? So, you know, that was it a surprise or was I sort of expecting something like this? Or had we already explored all the other things, quote unquote, it could be like depression, anxiety, another health condition, um, a reaction to medications? Had we looked at all that stuff and you came to a very skillful conclusion that, you know, indeed, all other those things are under control or being ruled out or whatever. And so, yeah, I'm looking at something that's changing my brain and we don't have a way to, okay, we don't have a way to stop it. We don't have a way at this point, we don't think, except for vascular, to maybe slow this baby down some. Although it could be that we could help control a lot of symptoms. You know, so that could be a really helpful thing to know that there are a lot of things that I might be noticing that we could do something about. Oh, we can't fix the dementia. We might be able to manage some symptoms if we worked on it. Um, it's progressive, so it's not going to stop here. But we don't know exactly the speed or the, the exact progression at this point unless we do a little more work to look at the type of dementia you're looking at or types of dementia and sort of where you are so far with the shifts and changes that you're living with to see sort of where are we here. and. Are there things that will make sense and where what we're experiencing, you and maybe the people around you, and even me as just, you know, if I were the provider, that says to me, there's a lot of stuff we should be, could be doing here differently than what we're doing right now. But as a person living with this condition, in about 50% of cases, I think I'm still doing okay. And things are just challenging because my daughter's being stubborn my husband doesn't get it um you yourself you're you're just busy and you don't have time to help me um i think it's just my diabetes that's acting up or you know it's not that i'm not trying to get it it's the part of my brain that allows me to get it isn't doing such a great job and that's hard because it can come and it can go and it just so happens you know that i'm not noticing or i might have great awareness that something's wrong or I might think there's more wrong than people around me think is wrong because I'm seeing the holes, not the fabric. I'm having a really hard time with stuff I didn't used to. And it's really causing me to feel that intensity. And it goes from being uncomfortable to painful. Um, it's really painful for me. So right after the diagnosis, we talked about a, a period of time where I may need, as a person living with dementia, I need a little recovery time. Once I hear that, that stuff, and I need a structure that says, and I, I, we're going to set you up, I want you to come back in a week, what we think we have is a condition that I, I'm not going to be able to do a fix on. But I think there are a lot of things we can do, but I can't make the condition not happen. Um, so what I want to do is work with you on what's the best plan of action for you, because we're going to need a plan of attack here, a plan of care, a plan um, that helps where you want help and has you doing well where you're doing well. So Matthew, from that, how different is that from anybody receiving a new condition information? Yeah, very, I mean, really different in, in a lot of ways, Tipa. But in some ways, I mean, there are some other conditions out there where there are pieces like that set up where people start to get set up in, in some support and, and the next steps and all of that. But um, yeah, very, very different. Not something you commonly see. Um. <laughs> so, so unfortunately, medical practitioners don't act like medical practitioners when they hear the word or figure out the word dementia. And carers often don't act like careful people when they hear that condition because it still has a great deal of stigma attached to it, which is why we want to say it's an ever-changing disability. It's a it's neurodegeneration, but that there's like it's like after a head injury, there are changes. They often stabilize, but in about 50% of cases, they may not actually be stable. They may seem stable, but the person has just hit the wrist bucket and the button is on for possible progression um, into a dementia. So, you know, you don't know. 
And so why all of a sudden, you know, I think it's something that's probably causing this that I don't have a quick fix. Um, there are things we can, we can work on together and there are some adjustments you're going to want to make. Um, but let's get back together and let's talk about it. And I really think we're going to need to look at a bunch of stuff again, because we were looking at it in a different way when we were getting the diagnosis. Now we want to look at it as we're looking at the, and I'm going to give you a word, prognosis. What can I look forward to? What's the path forward? What typically happens? And the answer is, okay, so in dementia, it gets difficult because dementia is a great big umbrella term and there isn't a typical for dementia other than it is going to progress. <laughs> but we, we don't know the exact time frame. We don't know the exact next areas. We don't, I mean, and really in many cases with just identifying a dementia, we don't even really clearly know what parts of your brain are doing really well, what parts of your brain are starting to struggle some, which ones are affecting your life, which are the ones that really bother you uh, or bother people around you or have the potential to cause harm or are causing harm because of the very nature of what's happening. So that's number one, why for a return visit. The second is to look at, with this new element in place, we all need to look at all the medications you're taking and make sure that nothing that you're taking is actually making this worse and that the taking of the meds is happening the way we all think it is. And some of those meds may be prescriptions, may not. But now we have to take a step back further and go, okay, let's get an expert to look at that stuff. Because, you know, that's not where we need to put all our energy. But before we start a new medication, we want to look at everything you're on before we look at anything that might be helpful. Because I got to figure out with you, you're the person living with dementia. If I'm the person living with dementia, we need to look at me and what's working for me. What's really challenging me and what's my new normal going to look like what is normal for me at this point with what my brain is doing and what it's not doing so my new normal might be that i i need routines now and i never really followed a regular routine it just it happened when it happened i was much more flexible but now if i don't have a sequence to follow I skip things that are sort of important to my well-being and I get it and I get frustrated myself that I forgot to do things and I know better, but I thought I, or is the challenge that I don't know whether I did it or not. So I need a monitor to help me know, did I actually take those pills or did I just take the pills out of the container, put them on the counter and go to get a drink and forget that I left the pills on the counter get the drink and think I did what I was supposed to do because I skipped steps, which speaks more to me not being in the very early signs of dementia, which is going to be the case for somewhere around 70, 75% of people who are just getting their condition identified in a very rough form. So it seems like, you know, this is a time, this is a place where I really need some support. And I don't need to see it from a medical provider. I'm actually going to need potentially some peer support. I, I need to hear from people who are also doing this. How do you do this? What are some ways you get out of this? How do I deal with the pain, the discomfort? How do I deal with my frustration? How do you deal with family members? How do we, how do I talk to people about what I'm experiencing so they don't get that look in their eye like, oh, she's going to be a rough, I mean, how do I move forward? What's my new normal? You know, do I say something to my friends? How do I say it? Do I get somebody else? Do I, can I drive? Am I safe driving? Um, am I going to be able to go down to the workshop and do stuff? Or am I too dangerous? I mean, for people who have some awareness of what dementia can be, it can be immobilizing when you first realize, oh my gosh, I've got that thing. And if you help someone live through their life, it can be even more concerning because you, you do know what, what happens further along and for some people anyway, from past experience. And so your brain is trying to compare you with them and, and am I like that or am I not like that? How far along am I? 
you know, I don't, and, and to be immobilized, well, that's totally dysfunctional. So in my mind, things that are helpful is to find someone who knows how to support somebody, is a great and very skillful listener, thinker, uh, with emotional support, and have somebody sort of give themselves some space, and then let's let's start thinking about. So, what do you what's what's working for you now, and what's getting in your way, and what is going to be your new sense of purpose? Are you going to be able to stay in the job? whether it's volunteer or whether it's paid that you're in now, or do we need, is part of what you're going to want to think about is an exit strategy that's going to be not just getting out of that, but going into what? So leaving somewhere misses the transition need. When you transition out, you've got to transition to something. Um, so looking at what's my new normal going to be and what's the I mean, so what? It's like, well, there's a big so what here. So I now have a, a label for it. Do I share that label with people or do I not, given what people believe? Do I want people to know, and it's important for them to know that I'm living with Lewy body dementia. I'm living with uh, what we think is frontal, you know, a behavioral variant in frontal temporal dementia, which right now I can talk to you about it, but it also means I may have episodes of time where I blow up or I cry. And I, I'm, if you ask me why, I can't even tell you why I'm crying. I'm just devastated. Or I'm experiencing something that, you know, how do we have conversations about this stuff that most people don't even know what I'm talking about? Well, maybe what we do is figure out where they need to go so they have a better handle or where we both need to go to have a better handle on this. So, you know, for such a widespread condition, I feel like we have a very poor plan of life after, after identification. And we can look around at other health conditions or other life conditions that we might have a better plan for because it's not just like, what, how do I want to die? It's how am I going to live? Yeah, and then, you know, how, what are my goals about my end of life? But that's sort of like, we should all be doing that at some point, but not when you're in crisis. That's not when you want to think about it. It's like, what's important and who knows that? And we also have to think about housing and funding and people and um, purpose and joy and, you know. So Matthew, I feel like I've made this clear as mud. <laughs> what did you take away from all the things I just said though? You know, Tipa, I think like, like many dynamic situations, there are just so many different pieces, so many questions that pop up in ways that you can really handle it when you, when you get news like that, that there is this neurodegenerative disease or process that's occurring that the doctor, unfortunately, is unable to, to do anything about it, to stop it, but Okay, so let's watch. So there's that word again. Unable to do anything about it. Unable to fix it. I am unable to fix it. Fixed. And that's yeah. a real important difference. And, and I think yes. I can't cure it. We've got to say that. I can't cure it. I can't cure it, but there's lots we can do about it. Just like there can be several kinds of, you know, we can't cure diabetes, but there's lots we can do about it if right. you're interested. Yeah. And that and 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 that's exactly where I was going to go with that piece was that and I think honestly, Tipa, for a lot of folks, even if the doctor did say, you know, I'm not going to be able to to fix it, I'm not going to be able to cure it. It's still that immediate. Oh, no. oh gosh, this thing they can't they can't stop it. It's they're not and but it's still the idea that there is something that we can do to help you live your best life, to, to do the things you still want to do. Yeah. There's support out there. There's things out there, but it's getting them to that yeah. part and, and ways that, you know, we, we have covered with healthcare providers that you can do to yeah. help support, but for someone who just got this diagnosis, this person now who's getting that diagnosis, the idea that there are things out there. There's, there's things that we can do 
to help support um, and then how to find those and where to go about that. So that for me, that was the biggest, the biggest part was that idea that it, it isn't something where, okay, that's it. We're, we're done. There's not yeah. nothing else you can do. It, there is, there are things out there. There's support there. There are pieces yeah. out there. So, um, and there's more to a prognosis and well, good luck. And you'll be back when things get worse, I guess. All right. Well, there's not a lot I can give you. Here's some medication. I mean, it's, it's not that that's not what we're talking about a prognosis. So I'm going to end us with this one. Instead of starting with, well, you know, unfortunately, I found there's not a whole lot. Um, the condition that you have is not one I can, I can cure or fix. I'm going to start with something different. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to encourage us to take a step back before we take a step forward. And I know this is about what can the person living with dementia do? And it is important that people have choices in what they can do. Do I want to label myself as having dementia? Do I want to identify myself as someone living with, I am living with, or I'm still TIPA and I've got a new health condition that is impacting my life. Now that made people curious and it's like, okay, so ask me, what's your health condition? Well, it's something that's changing my brain and how well I can use it. Um, but if I said, you know, I, which I haven't, I'm going to say it up front, I have not. If I had COVID earlier and I ended up with brain fog after COVID and I said, well, I'm having some brain fog after COVID, people more than likely would go, oh, yeah, I've heard about that. So what are they doing to help you? Now, we'd, we'd still be looking for, so what are they doing to help you? Even though I heard it was brain fog or, you know, I've, I've had cancer and now I got chemo and I have my brain gets foggy sometimes. Oh yeah, I heard about that. So, but now that's considered, I have some brain fog. And yet many of our people living with dementia describe, I have brain fog, you know, and that's what, worse for them is when they have their brain fog. Other times the brain is working pretty well. This idea that we have such a negative, a negative feeling about this thing that we call dementia, the loss of being me, um, the loss of me. And it's, it's like, that's why I just really like, is this the right word to keep in our vocabulary? It just feels like it has a lot going on there with it. So tomorrow, uh, we're going to look at, you know, not to overwhelm, but we are going to look at some options that people might want to think about as their first, what do I want to work on? What do I want to work on? And, you know, it's not going to be one thing. It's going to be the puzzle. And, you know, which area of the puzzle do you want to focus in on a little bit? What areas of the puzzle can you sort of be okay with right now? And, as we're moving from where you are. And a lot of it depended where you were when you came in for the diagnosis. Were you already in challenging territory or was it the first niggle that something wasn't seeming right? And here's what I noticed. And you have a really skilled provider and the provider said, oh, hmm, okay, well, let's pull some things out and then let's look at uh, the evidence and let's go, okay, this is what I think we have going on here with you, but I'm not exactly positive. I'm gonna tell you that. So let's look at what we can do but I'm pretty sure this is the ballpark we're in. I wish it were different, but it isn't. So let's look at where we are because we'll, we caught it really, really early. And so we have some options open. I think that sounds a little different. Um, and boy, wouldn't it be nice if we had more of that going on than, wow, you're already in the middle of this. No wonder you guys are having such a hard time. <laughs> it's like, oh. How did it sneak by everybody for so long? I mean, don't we do annual sort of exams? Oh. All right, everybody. Till tomorrow, take care with care. Matthew? Tipa, ooh, before we go, yeah. I, just, I just wanted to mention um, that we, in the month of February, we have a sponsor, oh, actually, do. who's sponsoring it's our- sponsor We've ever had one for all our free events that Positive Approach to Care puts out there. We have, for all free events, we have a sponsor, and the sponsor is Nurse Partners, and they're in Philly, and they're a home care support for people who are doing things at home because- Home is where a lot of people want to be. So they're partnering with people who want to stay at home. So anyway, 
That's our sponsor for all free events. And we'll be mentioning them because they're funding part of these free events because, you know, really and truly hardly anything is really free in this world. You know, even oxygen, you have to be careful with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I put the link in the, the chat. So uh, click that link, check them out guys. Um, because yeah, they, they're doing some great stuff in that Philadelphia area and, and that website will tell you a lot of what they're up to. And I also, I also tag them. So if you want to check out their Facebook page, you should be able to click on the tag as well um, and, and check that out there. And actually, even if you just want to say thanks for sponsoring the pack events, you know, that would let them know that you noticed and that we let you know that they were doing this. So it's just sort of a courtesy call. Nothing else other than that, especially if you don't live in Philly. <laughs> However, all right. Thank you, Matthew, for reminding me because I, oops, forgot that one. All right, everybody, take care with care. We'll see you again tomorrow morning. Bye, everybody.